very good evening to all of the audience and also the participants today. Welcome to the Carnival Kejaya Keluarga Malaysia 2021. And uh, today we have a very special guest, Dr. Muhammad Faik Abdul Aziz from the Faculty of Educational Studies, University Putra Malaysia. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. So today we will be talking about one of, uh, I think, one of the biggest um, issues in the country, okay, in, in regards of the labor market of Malaysia. And in particular, we will be talking about the future skills and competencies. Okay. So we will start the session with um, a, you know, a statement that we can share. In 2022, the COVID pandemic has caused an adverse impact to the livelihood of job seekers, be it employers and also the industry. And also, because of this COVID pandemic, a lot of people were being retrenched and a lot of people loses their job because of the demands and the supply in the country is declining. Okay? So, based on the statistics from the employment insurance system, the numbers of loss of employment actually increases 50% in 2020 as compared to 2019. Okay? So, Doctor, what do you think about the current economic conditions and how do you see the direction of the economic condition in the upcoming months? Okay. Maybe All you right. can share your insights, Doctor, please. Okay, thank you so much, um, Mr. Andreas, um, our moderator for today's session. Um, first of all, Assalamualaikum and uh, good evening to everyone. Um, I'm sure our guests uh, today came from a different background, right? Uh, some of them are job seekers, uh, fresh graduates, interns, and of course, for sure, there's a students here who want to get some information what's happened in the job market. Now, and uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you so much for uh, Pekeso for inviting me. And uh, uh, hopefully I can share some information with the job market. Now, uh, I'm Fai Abdul Aziz. I'm the Senior Lecturer in Faculty Educational Studies in University of Putra, Malaysia. And my uh, area of expertise is in human resource development. So when we talk about labor market, Andy is a huge um, topic, but I want to focus on the future skills and competencies. Okay, now uh, to begin with, uh, historically, historically, um, our nation, um, our nation managed to survive from um, several economic crises, um, recession, uh, disease outbreak. But um, in today's unprecedented environment, I believe that the government, public, and also um, private institution have um, certainly not imagined the challenge that COVID-19 has uh, impact on them. And this uncertainty not just have crushed our economics, uh, our business, our health system, uh, but also it's uh, impact our social life, uh, mental health, and also well-being. Um, I believe all of us um, have noticed that um, in this two years period, um, all employees have uh, all employers have tried their best in order for them to survive. For instance, um, they unfortunately they need to reduce salary, no bonuses, um, no increment, and the worst part is some of them need to lay off their employees, which um, I believe that as a uh, responsible and employee-centric organization, that will be their last choice that they want to do. But in the context of level market, uh, Mr. Andreas, um, according to the Department of Statistic uh, report in 2021, there is a gradual recovery in the level market, all right? In the third quarter of 2021, uh, with the support of the National Recovery Plan. Now, by looking at the report also, uh, even though the unemployment rate are still high, uh, in quarter three, uh, 2021, which is 4.7%, uh, but uh, this percentage are gradually decreased from 4.8% in, quant in quarter one and quarter two this year. Now, if we compare to the unemployment um, rate last year in quarter two, 2020, the percentage are more higher, which is 5.1%. 
So again, I think the labor market, you know, gradually improving, and hopefully due to increase in our vaccination percentage, and also due to the you know reopen reopening the Malaysian economics, um, surely our labor market will um, getting better and better. All right. Um, in addition, in uh, in terms of the employer's initiative to survive. Uh, the pandemic COVID-19 has also impacted their strategies, strategies as well. Uh, you know, based on the World Economic um, Report 2021, uh, on Malaysia itself, if you can see there, uh, many employers have changed their strategies and business operation towards digital, digitalization. Um, because of these current changes, uh, the employers are actively um, conduct skills um, upskilling, reskilling, uh, and training development to ensure that their employees uh, have the skill sets in handling this digital transformation and of course, the organizational uh, transforming agenda. Uh, and also, Mr. Andres, uh, this will link to their future recruitment process, right? As well, which I think candidates that have um, digital and technology-driven skills will be an added value for their, you know, future recruitment. So uh, that is, I would like to say about the overview related to uh, labor market uh, of uh, Malaysia nowadays. Now back to your question uh, in terms of uh, what the, the economy is heading and then uh, how the industry is uh, coping, right? Yeah. Well, um, uh, that's a good question. In my opinion, uh, in the perspective of academician, eh, uh, by looking at the gradual uh, decrease in unemployment rate, like I said in quarter three, which is 4.7%, um, and um, reflecting the growing demand of labor, which uh, rising vacancies numbers on my future jobs um, report itself, which you mentioned uh, there's a what 1.1 million uh, vacancies up to date, and of course by the support of National Recovery Plan, I'm confident that um, we are able to you know strengthen back our economy. And uh, when we talk about where is um, our economy heading to, um, how the um, industry coping with it, I think. Uh, while digitalization was you know underway prior to covid the pandemic has um, accelerated the rise of dig digital economy um, for instance there are companies uh, were previously reluctant to switch their traditional system now they have to change to digital system all right and uh, the pandemic also they they need to do that if not then they will left behind right and if they want to continue doing business, uh, they need to work uh, digitally. And this has led uh, the sharp rise in development of uh, new apps, uh, system, and et cetera, et cetera. All right? So that is, um, I would say, about the current condition of our labor market. Thank you, Doctor. I think it's a very interesting uh, perspective uh, from your side. And um, I believe the pandemic causes uh, the industry to you know, move towards digitalization and it catalyzes the whole transition. Yeah? Companies starting to be uh, digitalized and then uh, you know, work from home is more of a norm at this yeah. moment. You know? more, more of the people are working from home and we are more confident. And also in terms of the government's support to mm -hmm. you know, this recovery process, there's a lot, lot of uh, incentives that is being uh, provided by the government. For example, like the hiring incentives, and the wage subsidy programs that is there to assist the industry to actually regain back the momentum after the pandemic. Correct. So sure. I believe it's aligned to that recovery process that we have, uh, you know, to ensure that the, the country goes back to the you know normal situation. Yeah, sure. Okay. So thank you, doctor. So going to the next uh, situation, or you know, um, maybe some questions that we have. Uh, there's no doubt that the pandemic has impacted all of the job seekers. You know, it, it could be. Um, job seekers, they are experienced workers. It could be, you know, currently working workers, or it could be the fresh graduates. Yeah, and because of this situation, a lot of the opportunities 
is being, I would say, um, segmented. You know, people would offer or opt for a workforce that is already uh, trained and also experienced. So work is being done much more efficient and faster. So it it gives us another perspective of what happens to the graduates, okay, <laughs> and what is the current situation of our graduates in Malaysia, right. and uh, you know. What do you think of our graduates and what are the main difficulties that our graduates actually faced in terms of finding job opportunities in the current situation amidst this uh, global pandemic? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Andreas. Well, uh, as a lecturer, that is what I'm worried what happened to my you know, students. Well, <laughs> um, here uh, I would like to highlight you know, in my slides the report that I gained based on the plan, strat, plan strategy Kebuli Prasaran Graduan 2021 to 2025 uh, related to the issues and challenges of graduates employability. Now, uh, based on this report, uh, they found that one of the issues why graduates, um, you know, might be difficult to get jobs um, is due to the lack of preparation in terms of their um, physical uh, in terms of their mental, emotion, and of course, uh, based on their appearance, okay, that's also important. Um, and supported by the Kazana uh, National Research Institute report in 2018, uh, they mentioned that the employer actually expect the future uh, employees must focus on 50% uh, of their interpersonal skills, 31%. Uh, uh, in terms of their work experience, and also 27% in terms of their technical skills, right? So therefore, uh, for our students and our future graduates out there, uh, I suggest from now you need to focus on, you know, enhance your interpersonal skills, right? And we move to the second issues, eh? uh, which is uh, uh, that related to job uh, preference, or should I say, the expectation from the millennials nowadays in terms of uh, you know, choosing job. Uh, based on the reports and throughout my research also, um, I found that the millennials with the, uh, with uh, efficiency of handling technology makes them more uh, attracted to work in an environment that you know, celebrates um, innovation, um, creativity and also um, high technology. And of course, uh, the millennials, they, they want to job that more flexible work style and uh, short waiting, um, high salary, and um, as well as a bright career development. Well, of course, all of us want that, right? Yeah. But actually, um, I would say not all, all of the employers are able to, you know, give them, able to support what their needs. Okay? So, just to share with you also, uh, based on the recent uh, Deloitte's Millennial Survey. Um, although the Millennial generation uh, is able to make a rapid leap in their career, which is, uh, I would say nowadays, you can see uh, there's a lot of um, young CEOs, right? Uh, even uh, 30s, 40s also already become, you know, somebody have, uh, you know, uh, workers under them. Uh, but, you know, um, this kind of generation actually, they uh, you know tend to jump here and there. You know, they maybe they uh, you know uh, focus on getting more salary when they jump here and there, compared to the previous generation, which is they said more towards you know uh, loyal towards their employers. So that is the uh, result based on the Deloitte reports. Now, to other issues would be the unprepared graduates. Uh, for the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Now, earlier we mentioned about the digitalization, right? So, as we discussed earlier in our, you know, economic uh, moving toward the digital transformation, uh, there are high demands for the graduates and the future employees um, to upgrade themselves to gain technology-driven skills. Uh, however, Mr. Andreas, this initiative must uh, not only come from the graduates, to be fair, you know, we cannot expect them to be good in this, good in that. Therefore, um, I would say in this case, like you mentioned earlier, uh, the industry, uh, the government, 
uh, of course the uh, education institution and also the society need to work together right to ensure they give uh, you know support uh, for us to uh, develop or enhance our future graduates now in academic perspective we understand um, based on the technology advancement uh, the industry has you know rapidly changed uh, we also don't want to have a situation where uh, when our students finish their study you know uh, get their degrees and then um, uh, they, are, they cannot you know uh, they cannot use their skills or should i say the, the degrees are not relevant the skills that they gain is not relevant so we don't want to do have that kind of situation now actually that is why you know uh, we are currently and actively uh, have an engagement uh, with the industry people for instance uh, we do some activities we involve them uh, we call up the you know uh, big big names in industry to give talk to our students and even we encourage our lecturers to do you know attachment in the company yeah so that after they learn for maybe for six months they come back and then they can you know train and teach uh, our students you know the real work life experience okay because not all of the academicians have the you know um experience uh, working in industry right and then uh, based on your question uh, in terms of the difficulties uh, based on my research and engagement with the uh, people from the industry uh, the main reason is uh, that the job seeker actually they demand for unrealistic salary and also i would say their lack of uh, interpersonal skills all right which i believe uh, uh, this happened you know when they uh, went for interview for instance eh? uh, they unable to communicate very well they present presented themselves with maybe um, unproper appearance and uh, low confidence level in answering question and so many other things make them you know unsuccessful unsuccessful during the interview now uh, just to share with you also uh, mr andreas um, as a lecturer this is our main concern all right um, towards our student nowadays uh, we know um, currently we conduct the class through online okay yeah. and then um, therefore uh, there's a bit uh, difficulties for our students to you know uh, have this kind of interpersonal skills right they cannot practice uh, communication they cannot practice the good leadership even they cannot practice you know work in a group but these are some of the difficulties and our concern right now and we uh, at the you know uh, as an academician try to improve and encourage encourage our student to become better and better All right okay, thank you thank you doctor for the response um i think it's, it's again very very interesting that you mentioned you know the millennials they are prone to you know technological uh, jobs and uh, and and in that sense in terms of the attention duration you know that's a research saying that you know the average attention span of millennials is only six second if you can't capture them within that six second you will not be able to convey a message effectively so you know it, it shows that uh, there's so much difference in terms of the generations that we had previously and the current current generation and you know in order for us to fill in that gap in terms of employment and also in terms of skills we need to understand from the perspective of the graduates and i really like the idea of you know posting um, your, your, your university lectures to the company, you know, because that, there is where you can actually understand the theory side of employment sure. and the practical side of employment in the industry itself. So I think that's a very good practice that a lot of the other universities can actually start to implement. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you, doctor. So uh, when we talk about the changes of the industry, um, you know, industry can change overnight. Yes. And because of technology, it is even faster at this moment. So um, in terms of the skills um, that, that we can see, you know, uh, there are a lot of new demands in the, in the market and there are a lot of new industries that emerge due to this uh, supply and demand. Okay? 
Uh, one example would be the Grab food uh, drivers, you know, food panda drivers. Uh, pre previously, it was uh, a job that uh, only people who requires extra money to do so, you know, so they will take up Grab jobs and the delivery jobs. But because of the pandemic, it, it generates a lot more income that causes them to be able to live off with those kind of jobs. <laughs> okay. And uh, because of that, we see that the industry is much more different as compared to what we had. Things are being automated. People prefer life to be simplified through, you know, human services. So where do you see the industry is currently shifted? And what are the emerging jobs and what are the redundant jobs due to this fast pace of shifting in the industry? Doctor. Okay. All right. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Andreas, for the question. Now, this is actually, I would say, um, the main reason uh, about today's um, topic, which is the future skills and competency needed to our you know, future employees. Now, um, I would like to take this opportunity to share with the audience uh, the emerging and redundant job role based on World Economic Forum Report uh, 2020. Uh, in addition, uh, from the figure uh, shared in the Future of Job Survey 2020, uh, employer expected that uh, by 2025, uh, increasingly redundant role will be declined from being 15.4% uh, of workforce to 9%, right? So we, which is 6.4% decline. And um, that emerging professional, which is the, the blue color one, will grow from 7.8% to 13.5%, okay, which is 5.7% growth. So I would say um, this is uh, uh, things that uh, the, the future uh, uh, workforce uh, need to think, all right, where they headed to so that they can plan uh, later on when they enter into the job market, they already have this kind of, you know, um, skills and competencies. Now, in academic perspective, um, I do believe that uh, the labor force uh, uh, can be used this data to prepare themselves for the future. Uh, this is why, Mr. Andres, it's very important for us to have a mindset of uh, lifelong learning, right? Sometimes people, after, <laughs> after they finish a uh, degree, uh, they don't want to, you know, um, learn again and sometimes they feel comfortable when they already got a job. But actually when it comes to learning, it's actually a lifelong learning, all right? Uh, uh, even though they are very comfortable and what we currently doing, uh, but this pandemic actually um, teach us that we need to keep upgrade ourselves, all right? Uh, with the new skills, uh, new competencies, improve our academic qualification, or maybe we need to take a um, professional certificate uh, that, uh, of course, relates to our job. Because if something happens, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, can be the someone that is still marketable and can be the potential valuable candidates to the employers. I believe um, you also noticed that, uh, uh, Mr. Andreas, uh, when they lose their job, they don't know what to do. And even... Yeah, I sadly want to say this, even I saw uh, when a pilot also uh, need to open a restaurant, become a, you know, a car dealer or whatever. So we need to think how we can develop ourselves to ensure if something happens, we are still marketable. All right. Okay. Um, now, if you uh, look about the um, emerging area, redundant job, redundant job. Uh, by looking at the trend, uh, since the economy is accelerated uh, uh, towards the digital transformation, I think our graduates uh, need to prepare themselves um, with a job related to data. Okay? Uh, because now, um, I think uh, we know that data is very important for us to make a decision, to make action. All right? And for instance, eh, easy to understand. Lah. Uh, now, I think even the, the, older, the older citizen in village, eh, bila kita balik kampung, kan, uh, we can see that you know, they're really concerned about the COVID-19 cases before this. Yeah. Uh, so when the uh, 
COVID cases increase, they're afraid to go out. And of course, there's the MCOs and everything. And then when the vaccination uh, program increase, uh, now they you know, have the courage to go out and perform their daily life. So it shows from the data, it reflects our behavior, right? So moving forward as well, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the company uh, will you know, use the sufficient data in order for them to do operations and everything. Therefore, for those who have this and uh, maybe digital analytic um, skills and of course technology driven skills, for sure there will be more um, marketable and going to be an added value to them. So these are the uh, related to uh, emerging and redundant job roles. Okay. Uh... I think that's a very good uh, insight in terms of you know the way forward of the industry and what are the emerging and also uh, maybe redundant skills. And if you can see from what uh, Dr. have shared, it is quite uh, significant that a lot of these job roles is relating to digitalization. Yeah. And um, you know it is something for us to ponder, especially our graduates, to start picking up skills to increase our inventory, especially in digitalization. And uh, even we have been working closely with Microsoft, okay, so through my future jobs, to offer free training to you know citizens in, in Malaysia, school leavers and graduates to take up digital skills to uh, maybe enhance the opportunity in getting jobs, especially in the in the um, you know digital uh, segment. Okay, so I think, Doctor, based on your uh, sharing, um, it's quite um, I think significant for our job seekers to remain competitive in the market so that they are able to be hired by the employers. And one of the best ways to do that is to make sure that they possess skills that, that is transferable from one sector to another sector. If you can see in terms of the retrenchment rate, it is you know, um, causing certain employers in certain sectors to be uh, you know, defaulted because of the economic condition, the supply and demand in the market. And having these skills, this specific type of skills that is transferable and easily utilized in different different sectors would actually enhance the opportunity to be employed. So there goes the one of the most important questions in, in the, I think, today's session. Okay, based on your observation, what are the skills uh, in which our graduates should be looking into in order to enhance the opportunity to be employed? Okay. Okay, all right. Um, thank you so much, Mr. and Mr. Andres. So, uh, they go to my next slide, which is what are the emerging skills? Now, when we talk about skills, um, yeah, I think not just the, the students, the future graduates, even the employee itself currently try to, you know, uh, upskilling, reskilling their skills in order to support this uh, digital. Uh, transformation and also uh, change agenda in their uh, in their organization you know that is why sometimes uh, we as a academician also involved in uh, giving training uh, you know uh, giving um, knowledge and so many other things now, um, now based again based on the will economic reports that I found in uh, the, the the imaging skill based on the reports 2020, uh, these are the emerging skills required in the future. All right? If you can see that there's an emotional intelligence, um, creativity, originally incentive, analytical thinking, and innovation, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. All right? So these are the skills. Now, in fact, um, uh, we understand uh, these are the uh, important skills in the future. Therefore, we as a clinician, uh, we work together with people from the industry uh, in you know, providing, like I said, uh, training, upskilling and reskilling program. Uh, like what we have highlighted earlier, uh, due to this COVID-19, many employers have changed their strategies and also the way they do business you know, towards digitalization. Again, uh, digitalization is the key words here. Uh, because of these current changes, uh, the employers are, you know, actively conduct training to their employees uh, to ensure that uh, they have the specific skills in order to support these um, these changes. Lah. So uh, this also requires 
again, uh, when I talk about um, skills and future jobs or whatever, uh, this also required the mindset of lifelong learning. Okay, you yourself need to have the mindset of lifelong learning, which refer to the process of gaining knowledge uh, and learning new skills uh, throughout your life. Many people continue um, their education for personal development and fulfillment, while others see it as a significant step uh, towards their uh, career development. Now, in the spirit of lifelong learning, eh, just to share with you, Mr. Andreas, <laughs> um, some, like I said, sometimes people might think after they leave the university, they feel, okay, I had enough of study. Now I just want to focus on my job. Surprisingly, um, I have, uh, I would say, alhamdulillah, I have the opportunity to meet several people and give, um, you know, uh, teach people here and there and then uh, being a supervisor. Uh, I would say, surprisingly, there's a, uh, I have a student that is, I think currently she's 55 years old, already want to retire, uh, have a good position, live in Johor. She's still continuing his, uh, sorry, her PhD, right? And then um, last week in my weekend classes, um, I found that there's a student. Um, she currently having two jobs, one during weekdays, one during weekend. And uh, on top of that, she also uh, pursuing her uh, master degree, which is in human resource development. So I would say, if you know what you want in your career, okay, if you know that uh, in at one point, what you want to be, and of course, if you've had the ability to do that, of course, you, have, you need to have the support, financial and so many other things. You just need to do it, right? You just need to do it. So therefore, the ability to uh, have this mindset of lifelong learning is very important to ensure this uh, you can gain these emerging skills, right? And uh, uh, based on my observation also, Mr. Andreas, um, um, as a lecturer, uh, even though uh, I showed the audience about these uh, emerging skills uh, based on uh, World Economic Forum Report 2020, um, I think the future graduates now, maybe they need to focus on the basic, basic skills, right? Because, you know, for the past two years, we've been doing online classes. Like I said, it's difficult for them to, you know, um, gain the leadership skill, communication skills. Uh, even when I conducted class, sometimes not all of them open their, their cameras, you know? Uh, I think some, even in yeah. meetings also, not all <laughs> the employees open their cameras, right? So I think uh, for the future employees, the fresh graduates, uh, even a student right now, maybe if you want to go in terms of the emerging skills, maybe, um, yeah, uh, it's a bit high level. So maybe they need to focus on the basic, basic things, right? Communication, leadership, how well you can work together, you know, listening and... Um, yeah, so many other basic things. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. That's a very good uh, observation that you have. So I, I think one of the key, um, you know, um, ideas or maybe the key items that we can bring back from this session would be the lifelong learning mentality. And I believe by having that mentality in terms of your, uh, you know, your career and also your life, you can actually improve not only as a person, but also as an employee or even, uh, you know, in the future as a, you know, as a um, part of the community or the society. Okay. So um, also by having that mentality adapted in, in your life, you can actually make sure that from time to time, through the phases of your life, your skills will be renewed and also making sure that it is always relevant because there's a research that, that suggests, uh, it's actually from IBM, that um, the skills generally have uh, maybe uh, half-life, which is about five years, you know, that would be generally in terms of the skills. And technical skills is more shorter of a period of time. That means it's only two and a half years. So imagining that if I take a, a training in terms of these skills today, 
in another two years' time or two years and a half time, it would be redundant. So I have to reskill and upskill myself from time to time to make sure that I am always competitive in the market. So having that mentality would actually assist job seekers to be more uh, employable by the, um, you know, by the employers. Okay. All right. So, doctor, I think we have discussed the direction of the labor market, um, the skills, uh, in that, uh, the skills that is required. You know, what are the emerging jobs and redundant jobs that uh, is currently in the market, and to move forward as a job seeker, especially for graduates, uh, even retrenched workers or school leavers, it is very important for our job seekers to have certain strategies to make sure that they actually get that opportunity to be hired by the employers. So we would like to know from uh, you, doctor, how can our graduates develop these strategies and what do they have to do to start looking for a job that suits to their preference, especially in this uh, period of pandemic? Uh, yeah, COVID pandemic, yeah. Excuse me. Zero five two nine. Just a moment, okay. All right. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Andres, uh, for the question. The strategy now. <laughs> Uh, again, I think as a as a lecturer, these are the basic things, you know. Um, so I believe that um, in front of me, we have a different kind of audience. Eh? Uh, we have uh, uh, job seekers, uh, fresh graduates, interns, uh, students, uh, not to say they come with their parents. <laughs> uh, so I think, therefore, it is important for me to do some uh, refreshment, lah, right? Um, here are some of the suggestions for the job seekers out there in uh, strategize their career. Okay, not just getting a job, but how to get a career. Okay, just getting a job maybe is simple, but how you can get a career? Uh, I understand maybe this looks uh, simple, but surprisingly. Sometimes when I ask uh, our alumni or maybe our fresh graduates, hey, w um, what is your plan to get a job? Um, doctor, follow the flow. La. <laughs> right? Yeah. So sometimes you need to have a strategy. Right? Now, um, first, identify your um, preferred job, uh, which of course must be in line with your academic level and background. Right? For instance, if you want to be an accountant, for sure, uh, you need to have a degree in accountancy, some other things. Lah. So, identify a preferred job. That is normal. Uh, number two, uh, it's very important for you to understand the job description. All right? uh, the problem with um, um, what, will, what will happen uh, when uh, during interview, when they ask you questions, can you do this, can you do that? Oh yes, I can do. Uh, are you able to, you know, have uh, have this skill handle things? Uh, can you do this project? Oh sure, sure, I can do. All right, that is during interview. But after they, you know, uh, get a job, and suddenly when they been asked to do certain things, uh, they are unable unable to do that. And at the end of the day, they will blame the company. So it's very important for you to understand the job description, which is. Uh, you can relate with your uh, personal life. If let's say uh, there are things that you need to improve, then there's the time, right? So uh, know the job description is very important. Now the third and fourth, uh, which is what we are trying to discuss today, uh, you need to do some, I think I suggest to do some research about the essential skills uh, and the competencies and also the essential knowledge that you, you, know, you need to have in order for you to get your preferred job. All right? uh, for instance, um, yes, after you graduate, uh, for example, in accountancy, you expect to be an accountant in any of the companies that you prefer. But I would say, uh, for sure, you don't want your life to be at that level, right? You want to go further and further in your career. So what else do you need to do? Maybe you need to plan to, to get your professional certificates, 
like um, SCCA or maybe further your um, you know education level maybe in get your master degree and maybe in PhD degree or something so all of this actually is a process of you to you know keep upgrading yourself all right uh, because at the end of the day we don't know what's going to happen you know in our future uh, like I said again this COVID-19 teaches so many things right uh, we expect that uh, until the end of retirement we are comfortable uh, nothing will happen to us uh, I would say every industry being impacted by this of course there are negative and also positive positive side like the you know entertainment industry for instance uh, I found that in Netflix their subscriber increase on so many other things like extras and whatever but in major part or many part of the companies all of them are impacted and when they are impacted it will hurt the employee as well so they need to you know lay off and whatever things so it is very important again the concept of lifelong learning how to when you have the um, opportunity to you know further your 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 studies uh, take the opportunity all right take those opportunity uh, that is uh, what I currently you know um, facing with all of my students uh, I can uh, sometimes surprise hey you already want to retire why are you further you know further studies of course I not I don't want to be uh, demotivated yeah. but I just want to know why but when I when I hear they say uh, uh, I want to upgrade myself you know, I want to improve my knowledge so as a lecturer when I hear that it made me proud and it motivates me to become better uh, so that I also you know can translate uh, uh, the knowledge and everything to that person now um, uh, when you mentioned about the development of the strategies and what do they have to do to start to look for a job well um, I think uh, this uh, again even though it, is, it looks simple the steps uh, are very important for the future employees to be open-minded right that's the most important thing sometimes you think that um, uh, these are, you, you expect things to be like this but sometimes it happens other way around right you you demand for you know certain salary might be unrealistic so when you uh, you know you get a uh, lower salary then you, sometimes you reject so i would say you need to have a positive mindset and be open-minded all right as a fresh grad maybe uh, just take it first all right uh, gain op uh, gain some experience while you know while working and then you know keep on strategize what's next okay like i said maybe you need to uh, get a uh, additional um, you know professional certificates uh, pursuing studies or and many other things right so uh, for uh, for the fresh grad i think is is very important they need to have plan they need to have plan, right? Uh, even uh, some of people out there, uh, they like to jump, jump uh, here and there, jump career. In fact, um, just to share with you, before I, uh, before I became an academician, uh, I was a banker. <laughs> so um, sometimes we don't know, right? What's going to happen? As long as you. Uh, there to take the challenge you have the ability and support just go through it okay thank you doctor i think that's a very good example of a lifelong learning mentality that you mentioned you know coming from a banking background all the way to, to an academician i think that's a very far off uh, you know change in terms of yeah. career so um i think the strategy that you shared focus the effort of job seekers to be more precise and focus towards the direction of their career that they wanted and uh, it makes the i would say probability of landing to a job much more higher because it's, it's focused and uh, maybe i think this is also the platform to share uh, i believe that uh, from your presentation earlier there's a lot of um, i think 
importance that, that is being put into the skills and competencies. And uh, through portals like My Future Jobs, uh, skills and competencies is being identified in the profile of the job seekers and then they are being matched based on what you have uh, shared earlier. So I think it, it helps job seekers to identify, you know, what are the possible jobs that they can actually get. Yeah. And uh, also moving forward, by using these skills and competencies, they are recommended of what are the skills or maybe what are the jobs that they can actually apply for and we get uh, hired to. Okay. That's true. So, I think, uh, Doctor, we have to start looking to the competencies and also the skills of the job seekers. I believe that will be the, the same understanding that you will have. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I think uh, throughout this session, we have um, heard from Doctor a lot of the sharing uh, in terms of what are the sectors and what are the industries that job seekers can focus in order to increase their opportunity uh, to be hired by the employers. And uh, we also heard of the skills and other possible jobs that job seekers can actually go for, uh, which is in high demands at this moment. And uh, in terms of our graduates, I think it's the right time for our graduates to start uh, learning on what are the possible, uh, you know, trainings and upskilling programs they can go for uh, in order to be hired by employers and be more employable in the future. So, Doctor, I would like to get, uh, you know, uh, some remarks or maybe sharing uh, from your side on you know uh, the current situation and uh, how can we motivate our graduates to move forward okay uh, i think uh, i would i would say based on the interesting quote that i found you know uh, it's very interesting faith uh, it's trusting god even when you don't understand his plan right <laughs> who knows uh, I also don't know why, uh, if let's say I don't have the courage from uh, jump from banking industry, took my PhD, and then now become a lecturer. So I would say, if they say I don't trust the plan, for sure I'll not be here. So again, uh, for whatever reason, uh, we mentioned as earlier uh, in our discussion today, um, the collaboration, um, the support uh, from the industry or from the um, government or from the education institution. At the end of the day, the most important thing is the candidate itself, right? It doesn't matter. There's a lot of opportunity outside there, right? Even, you see, uh, even my future job, you have developed a very... Uh, I would say a beautiful system. You can match match their uh, their skills, their experience, expertise, uh, academic qualification here and there related to their job. But a simple thing: if let's say they don't use it, okay, they don't go to the website. You know, they don't they don't take any um, like um, opportunity. They don't have the interest to search here and there. It's difficult for us to help them, okay? So at the end of the day, back to the uh, student itself, the candidate itself. All right. Okay, so I, I think, thank you, doctor. I think that's a very wonderfully worded uh, quote that we can take home today. And uh, like doctor mentioned, it's all on the job seekers or the graduates themselves. You know, the effort comes from them. And to move forward, they have to take the first step towards, you know, the journey that they will take in their career path. So I think with that, uh, we would like to uh, thank Doctor as our special guest today to be sharing on what I believe as a very um, you know a technical sharing from your side in terms of the industry, in terms of the skills, what are the jobs, and uh, we hope that based on this sharing that you had, um, it will help a lot of graduates yeah. to further improve and plan you know uh, for their future and to make sure that at the end of the day, a lot of our graduates actually. Be, uh, you know, being able to be employed in the industry. And uh, we believe through this sharing, a lot of our audience here uh, in, in this stage and also in uh, the, uh, you know, uh, online mediums that we have will benefit. And again, I would like to extend our gratitude to Dr. to be uh, our speaker today. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much, Andres, and thank you so much, Pekeso. Yeah.